Hello my YouTube family. You all are welcome to another exciting learning journey. In today's presentation, we will learn together what is a scoping review article and how did we conduct our scoping review. So without any further ado, let's start learning together. Basically, um, this published work is part of larger project. We have published uh, this work in BMC Medical Education in 2022 February. And I, I very much believe uh, that no one would agree that publishing is an essential part of academic or scholarly work because publications provide opportunities for feedback on the research. And uh, fortunately and luckily, I was encouraged by my main supervisor, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Saiful Bari, to publish our work. And I really received expert and kind guidance and continuous support from him in doing so. I firmly believe that the title of our research work is worth having a space of one full slide. As a matter of fact, it is the first introduction which our audience have towards the proceeding work. Therefore, we selected a title that uh, in our opinion grabs attention, accurately describes the contents of the work done and makes people or our award audience want to know further. Looking at the slide, um, we can easily identify as what is conveyed as the main topic of the study. Here we can observe that main areas highlighted here are effective coping strategies, medical students, mental health disorders, undergraduate medical education, and all this uh, related work uh, uh, associated with these main areas was carried out uh, by conducting a scoping review. This slide here, uh, is significant because to have a starter for the expert as well as for the beginners, it's a chance to refresh our uh, and refresh and recall our memory uh, pertaining to the terminologies uh, with concise definitions as we will have to come across with these particular terminologies very frequently in next uh, various sections of today's presentation. Coping being, being one of the most uh, important topic uh, comprising strategies which are utilized for confronting mental health disorders. Second area of our concern was the medical students. And we can see in the literature, it, suppose, it, sub, it supports the importance of equipping them with coping abilities, which will enable them uh, to survive well during challenging times, uh, especially in a world where a wide range of mental health disorders are predominantly prevalent. Last but not the least, we have addressed all the above stated such domains, specifically in the context of uh, uh, medicine, considering it to be very, very demanding professional uh, um, course. Uh, here, demanding is in terms of physical as well as uh, uh, mental demands on the part of uh, undergraduate medical students. I, I, I do believe, and I would, I would say that uh, no one. Uh, uh, or majority of uh, us would agree, no one uh, would disagree that these three questions, uh, what, why, and how, uh, they are really very important questions for any researcher. And they work as, as, a, as a best friend of every researcher. They help them uh, in knowing the answer and, and help uh, and, and getting to know to these answers, to these questions would definitely enable us or anybody else to be more engaged and show more initiative and have a greater understanding of uh, anyone's goal towards the research. Let's together know from the next slide as getting the answer to these uh, particular questions would lead uh, us towards our aim. And uh, we are showing, we are going to show you how we have uh, attempted to get answers in terms of the gap in the research or the methods we employ to explore our main topics. Here we can see the word what signifies uh, for M and why indicates for gap the frequently occurring coping strategies world over and also their effect on mental health disorders. The reason we were inclined towards this particular area or subject was the shortage of the available research. Once we were certain about the importance of our work and we have articulated our aims, now it was time for us to, to, to have a strategy and um, uh, where which could lead us to our aims therefore 
conducting a scoping review was considered the best method. And this is actually started with searching uh, available literature from 1st January 1986 to 31st March 2021. With the help of relevant search terms, utilizing the popular search engines of Google Scholar, PubMed, uh, and Scopus. The reason for carrying out a scoping review is described in the uh, next slide. According to the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, by the way, there are many definitions uh, which significantly mean utilized in the literature pertaining to scoping review. Uh, here we see what uh, Canadian Institutes of Health Research has to say. They say that scoping reviews or reviews or studies may be defined as exploratory projects that systematically map the literature available on a particular topic and identifying key concepts, theories, sources of evidences, and gaps in the research. So this way we arrived at the decision to conduct a scoping review. Aligned with the aim of our research, that is to identify effective coping strategies for mental, mental health disorders, was uh, in itself a huge and heterogeneous body of literature whose conceptual boundaries were uh, yet to be clarified. Hence, we opted for a scoping review. Once we had decided, uh, to conduct a scoping review, we get to know that uh, although the scoping review has become an increasingly popular approach in recent times for synthesizing research evidences, it is still relatively a new approach for which a universally accepted definition or a definitive procedure has not yet been established. Fortunately, we found that there were methodological frameworks by experts in the fields like Oxy and Omali. So we selected their methodological framework uh, to conduct our scoping review. Before we start explaining the research steps described by methodological framework presented by uh, Oxy of Mali, first we look at how our particular work, this work, matched the four reasons provided by Oxy and Omali again for conducting any scoping review. Reason they have posed were like reason number one is to examine the state of research activity on a selected topic. So we aim at finding uh, frequently occurring coping strategies world over uh, and frequently highlighted in the literature across the globe. Second reason, as we can see it here, is, is before a full systematic review. So this also matches with our future perspective as we intend to carry out a full systematic review in the near future. Third reason by them was synthesize and share such findings. And I believe that, that everybody would agree that our scoping review and every, anybody else work in research one day, two day, in, in near future or later on has to be disseminated and being, being discussed and taught and, and you know, uh, talked in, in various uh, uh, fora and then people really get engaged with it and, and people really uh, get um, uh, advantage of the findings that anybody else in the past has done. And, and, and one more reason, that is the highlight key gaps in the literature we found that uh, limited, there were very limited search that has been done to explore the common coping strategies utilized by medical students at, uh, especially at undergraduate medical education level. Axi and Omali, as we already have uh, discussed, uh, they have provided explicit step-by-step uh, -step guidance in, 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 a, in the form of methodological framework for scoping reviews, for conducting of scoping reviews. In this slide, we explain with examples, with real examples from our personal experience as what did we do at every stage. We can see that stage number one concerns uh, actually experiences, uh, uh, stage number one actually ex uh, concerns the issues in which the research is to be taken place. So therefore the research question for our scoping review was, what are common scoping strategies used by medical students in undergraduate medical education? For identifying relevant studies, we employed a three-step search. First, a primary search to Google Scholar, PubMed, and Scopus commenced in April 2021, and we conducted an evaluation of the content within the title and abstract and of the index term as well used to assign related articles. Secondly, a search employing all the established keywords and index terms was also commenced within the databases stated above. Third, the reference list of participating studies was investigated for further studies. And for study selection, the articles directly matching 
or similar to our mentioned keywords were cognized. Three stage screening title, abstract, and for full text was carried out. Moreover, the full content was looked at to determine fitness for inclusion. At this particular stage, the collection method of full text articles was accomplished by two researchers. A third researcher was always available to fix differences of opinion if found any. Fortunately, there wasn't any. And for charting the data, at this stage, uh, basically we developed an initial or uh, you may call it a, a provisional form to tabulate the relevant data from the included studies. Initially, randomly chosen articles were individually studied by uh, two research researchers who, who drafted um, the data abstraction form to ensure that their tactic for data extraction is uh, constantly reliable and consistent with the research question. The final form involved headings such as uh, study features, for example, year of publication and relevant uh, research focus areas, and for collecting and summarizing and reporting the result, the most important part of our research um, being uh, very challenging as well. We were able to recognize thematic categories of the literature involving various segments comprising methods, evidence, defining results and implications. Once all the data were assembled and some opening information had been recognized, a detailed meeting between the researchers or the authors was held to discuss the data analysis strategy, interpretation, discussion and writing of this manuscript for publication. Mainly data analysis uh, involved qualitative thematic analysis and stage six, as mentioned here, is for consultation, which according to Axie and Omali is an optional stage and uh, for our particular work, we do not opt for it. With these explicit inclusion criteria, we, we were able to determine our, our scope of document inclusion uh, with, with uh, three uh, different steps. We started with title suitability. Next step was uh, about abstract suitability. And final step we carried out was about full text suitability. So as not to miss any pertinent research, we applied generally a well-defined heading terms in the search. And finally, we conducted various test searches to refine and improve the search terms. The articles we searched uh, were yielded using medical subject headings, MESH. On the right-hand side, it is shown that our initial search yielded a very large or extremely huge number of documents with a Actually, with the passing time, with our screening process, with our multiple steps involved, we were able to further refine. And at last, we get fewer, but the most important studies to be included in our actual scoping review. At this particular stage, PRISMA flow diagram came in very handy. PRISMA stands for Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta Analysis. Kindly find link for PRISMA if anybody requires in the reference list at the end of today's presentation. Our included studies were of uh, various types and all the initially obtained articles uh, as the number was 2134. These all were reviewed for their titles, abstracts in full length and basically 24 were 24 documents were finally included in our scoping review. These finally included articles were uh, from 14 countries and the global distribution you can see on the left hand side. On the right hand side, there is an illustration of the procedure we opted actually to get the extract of the final document. That was a, a very, very challenging part of our work. And we utilized, we utilized a thematic analysis. We looked for patterns in data that can be used uh, to, to, to shed light on our research. Analysis was different. Uh, in, in different stages, which we are going to see in the next slide. With uh, thematic analysis approach, we look for patterns as we already discussed. And uh, uh, it, it really has given us data that can be used to shed light on in our research. Analysis basically was conducted in six, six different steps. Uh, during step number one, we read and reread the text from the available studies. And here, um, Jotting down early impressions was really very beneficial. And during step number two, we 
uh, were able to organize data in a, a systematic manner. Every line of text was not coded actually. As a result, we coded any data segment that was only relevant to our search question. This step reduced a significant amount of data and turned it, transformed it into a manageable part of information uh, that was very much relevant to the needed perspective and research questions. While working on step number three, there were there we were able to find the most frequent quotes with uh, uh, without losing any meaningful data. This also again helped us capture significant concerns. Further developing into prominent categories and while arriving at uh, step number four, we were able to ascertain which categories were related to each other. And next uh, step, we had uh, the most significant themes in hand. And, and at this particular crucial stage, uh, with an order of occurrence and representation and for, for extracted information from all included studies. The significance was actually based on their representation concerning the research question. At, at step, uh, that was the last, that was the sixth step, we found a fitting answer now to our research question uh, in the form of extracted points. And that was related with our two main themes. Uh, number one, mental health disorder, and the other was coping strategies. These two themes, MBD or encompass the most discussed issues about psychological morbidity with coping in the undergraduate medical education context, uh, uh, basically within the published literature. This uh, slide here actually portrays various inventories and uh, surveys and scales that have been utilized and, and been utilized. By, by the document that we had included in our scoping review. We can see that multiple surveys and skills uh, were utilized, but actually because this was not our main or, or minor object to determine the frequency of the multiple surveys. So we didn't write much in detail about this particular area in our paper. Next slide is very important and uh, we can see the most effective coping strategies, so positive as well as the negative are being shown here in, in with uh, relation to the geographical locations, um, the striking uh, or alarming, if you can, if you may can say, uh, is the finding that uh, students were uh, seen were uh, uh, using, they were, they were seeing using utilizing the negative coping strategies uh, as much as they had been utilizing positive coping strategies, despite. The huge or substantial body of research uh, demonstrating back, go back to the slide. Yeah. So here we, we can see that uh, the theme number one, which we have uh, already mentioned, was mental disorder, was uh, uh, yielding stress, depression, anxiety, and burnout. And on the other hand, we had another theme that was the coping strategies and and uh, there we got the support, uh, active coping, acceptance, avoidance, denial, substance abuse, faith region, sports and miscellaneous also. At the same time, th this also reflects the previous slide where we have seen that students were found to utilize the negative coping strategies uh, as frequently as uh, uh, similarly as uh, positive coping strategies. Uh, there has been a substantial body of research and which actually displays or demonstrates a very healthy or positive relationship between the support and happiness. Uh, yet we still know very little about the mechanism actually, no? that, that what the mechanism that by which support influencing the psychological and, and physical health. So we believe that more attention uh, should be given to those who are um, if you may call them disabled by drug abuse as, as, as utilizing their uh, negative coping strategies or with any mental illness or mental health disorder. Uh, and, and there is a need of renewed efforts uh, to emphasize uh, the prevention of uh, such mishaps and there has to be made some early diagnosis. So according to our findings, health support programs and proper guidance on using effective and positive coping strategies will improve undergraduate medical students' psychological resilience. However, we believe that uh, 
in future, in near future, uh, a meta analysis is is really needed to shed some more light uh, on this particular topic. In our study, we have used a very well known approach as a methodological framework uh, for scoping several articles to synthesize the available data, and we have successfully done so, and we were able to publish our article. And same time, uh, we had some more strengths in our uh, uh, research work. For instance, we had two reviewers at every level. And uh, utilizing more than one database really given us evidence for our studies meticulousness. These uh, we consider as a strength of our body. Nevertheless, we cite here in uh, the limitations of our, our, of our study. Firstly, only language, English language uh, search, uh, research articles were reviewed. So, because copying has now grown as a universally popular domain for researchers worldwide, there might be some more relevant studies in the languages other than English. Secondly, despite the extensive search approach we have employed and the inclusion criteria we have opted for, we did not find many studies from Middle Eastern or Southeast Asian countries. This may also be linked to English being not the first language in those particular countries. Um, data was made available within the published uh, article in the journal. Uh, I must say this work is undoubtedly a genuine teamwork and a huge and substantial contribution was made by all authors. We wish to extend our profound thanks to the University of Science Malaysia for the research grant, which was a, a, a great help indeed. To conclude, uh, we conclude that undergraduate medical students worldwide experience a wide range of mental health disorders. And during such challenging times, they, they try a, a variety of coping strategies as been shown in our previous slides. The most common, as we found, was support seeking and then active coping, acceptance, avoidance, substance abuse, religious coping, and sports engagement. It is still important to emphasize that aside from educating medical uh, students in their professional medical courses, their quality of life during their medical training must also be considered um, carefully and seriously. Therefore, teaching medical students how to deal with adversity uh, in their, in their uh, difficult times is very crucial, very critical. Individual and uh, administrative involvement is um, is again very essential for preventing mental health disorders among our medical students. Next slide is uh, for the references. And uh, with this slide, we end our, uh, our today's presentation and I hope you all must have enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any anything to further discuss or related to our work, you are you all are more than more than welcome. And once again, thank you so much.